In this video, I'm going to talk about another quirk of Quake 3's physics, namely how having a particular frame rate affects the player's movement. Those who have played the game may be familiar with a particular setting, COM Max FPS 125, which limits the frame rate to 125 frames per second, and as a result, allowed one to make jumps that are otherwise impossible. The effect of this is perhaps most clearly demonstrated at the Mega Health on Q3 DM13. With the frame rate uncapped, jumping up to the Mega Health is not possible. However, set the frame rate to 125 and it can now be reached. Whilst moving horizontally, this added height can enable the player to clear gaps that would otherwise be impossible. To understand why this happens, let's take a look at how a jump in Quake 3 would work with real physics. On the right hand side you can see height, or vertical displacement, over time. The jump starts at zero, then ascends to a peak before returning to the floor at height zero. Another way of thinking about this is in terms of the velocity as shown on the left hand side. As you can see, the velocity starts at 270 units per second, the jump velocity in Quake 3, and then decreases at a constant rate. This rate corresponds with the acceleration due to gravity, 800 units per second per second. Note that the area under the velocity curve produces the height curve. So how does Quake 3 actually calculate the player's velocity and height over time? The first thing to note is that the velocity and height are updated for every frame rendered. The pseudocode at the bottom of the screen shows how the game does this update when the player is in freefall. The velocity is decreased by the frame duration multiplied by 800, the acceleration due to gravity. The height is then increased by the area under the velocity curve over the time for this step. The steps just described correspond exactly with the physical simulation, and if this were the full story then the game simulation would perfectly match the physical model. However, there is an extra step at the end of each update, which is the key to Quake 3's frame rate dependent physics. In order to reduce network bandwidth, at the end of every frame, the velocity is rounded to the nearest whole number. You might think that the effect of this would average out over time, and with varying frame rate duration this is indeed the case. However, with certain fixed frame rates, and therefore fixed frame duration, the result is a much higher jump. So what's going on here? The key is on line 3. Note that because of the rounding from the previous frame, the input velocity will always be an integer. As such, if the frame duration multiplied by 800 has a fractional part that is less than 0.5, then the updated velocity will have a fractional part greater than 0.5, and so will be rounded up on line 5. This gives a higher velocity, and therefore a slightly higher height on successive iterations. Accumulated over all the frames of the jump, this difference results in a large increase in height. The COM max FPS variable, which was intended to limit CPU and GPU usage, is used to manipulate the frame duration such as this desirable rounding is achieved. Internally, the COM max FPS variable is converted to a whole number of milliseconds, and then rendering of a frame is delayed until this number of milliseconds has elapsed since the previous frame. Because the frame rate is expressed as a whole number of milliseconds, then there are a limited number of values that actually make a difference. Let's try a few. 333 FPS is clearly coming out on top, with the usual 125 FPS close behind. In fact, 333 FPS is the optimal frame rate. So why don't players use ComMax FPS 333? Well, the Quake 3 network code sends the player's inputs for each frame in a packet, and the packet rate when playing over the internet is controlled by the CL max packets variable, which has a maximum value of 125. As such, if you're playing over the internet, there will be no more than 125 player movement commands per second. 125 FPS truly is the best option for playing online. However, if playing locally or on LAN, and your computer can achieve 333 frames per second, then you can enjoy much higher jumps with this setting. Later on in Quake 3's life, this frame rate dependence was addressed by adding the pmoved fixed variable. When set to 1 on a server, this disregards the frame rate of each client and does player movement updates at a fixed duration, thus levelling the playing field a little for those not in the know about optimal frame rates. I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you did, please click like and consider subscribing. As always, please leave a comment if you have any questions.